people probably don't appreciate the sort of huge breadth of activities that are going on here. In order for you to understand what are the pertinent questions when it comes to research, you really have to be at the bedside, understand, see patients, so that you can then start developing their relevant research questions. Our primary objective is to do research that makes a difference, improves the quality and the quantity of life in the places where we work and hopefully beyond. And in that, to get there, you need obviously to train people. It's not the old idea of uh, let's go out from our rich university in the north and get some specimens and come back and do some clever science. It, we, we are committed to, to being there. There are around 33 million people infected in the world with the main form of HIV and probably only around a third of those have access to antiretroviral drugs. So there's still a considerable need to develop a vaccine or, or some other means of preventing HIV infection, which is really what our group is interested in. There's a, a, a real enthusiasm for this kind of work in Oxford, um, but it's also something where we can make a real contribution as well from very basic science studies right through to the most sort of practical end of evaluating large programs, trying to change health policy and so on. I live and work in, in Thailand in the Mahidon Oxford Research Unit. The way we and others operate is we are literally part of institutions in, in our countries. Most of our staff, most of our investigators are Thai. Before we started, people said, you can't do that there, this won't work, blah, blah, blah. And actually it did, and the, this was very much down to having excellent local collaborators, are really good people. It's they who navigate the individual terrain of that particular area, the social, cultural, political, academic, and I think that's the way tropical medicine in the future should operate. Because I see the future of international health as being genuinely uh, international. About 20% of the world's population live in Europe and America, but about 80% of clinical research is done on those populations. So we have a big gap there. The reason we need to do clinical trials in India is really twofold. One is to show that existing treatments work effectively well there. Um, but it's also that most of the new treatments are simply unaffordable. Um, to patients in India. I mean, they're unaffordable to many patients in the West. And the main study we're doing is using aspirin. Now, aspirin is extremely cheap, and there's fairly good evidence that it may reduce the risk of colorectal cancer, but there's been no kind of randomized controlled trials done up until now. I mean, everything that we do is done in partnership with our Indian colleagues. The protocols are developed with them, the studies are conducted entirely by them, um, and the results, again, are analyzed jointly and published jointly. And I think that has been one of the main reasons why we've been able to keep the network not just kind of going, but it has expanded over the last seven years. China emphasised research very much from very early on, has a, has a very strong tradition, but very much focused on sort of basic research, not much in population science. Oxford is very strong, and particularly in you know, this department, we have been doing large scale observational uh, epidemiology for the last 50 years, even outside China are very few big institutes able to do that. And also, you know, this kind of collaboration helped to train the new generation of epidemiologists. So I think, you know, that sort of collaboration, you know, Oxford with China has been very beneficial, um, a complementary to both sides. I started working on sickle cell disease in 2004, mainly because I realise that this is a big problem in our setting. It affects a lot of people, it causes a lot of suffering and it causes a lot of deaths. There is a lot of information about sickle cell disease, but there is very little about sickle cell disease in Tanzania and in Africa. The perception is that in order for you to do good science, you have to leave Africa. And, and the problem with that is that it does not allow the development of a strong scientific base in Africa. So when we started the project in 2004, it illustrates that it is possible for African scientists to do good science in Africa and that this science will be recognised. If you were in a family in Europe a hundred years ago, you would definitely know somebody whose child had died. We had large families and many of them died. They died from preventable and horrible diseases. And we don't have that anymore. And it's depressing that other people do have that problem. But it doesn't mean we should just become complacent. We actually do something about it. Uh, and it's exciting if you're in medical research because you, 
in this particular area, you can actually make a substantial difference.